Hey guys, welcome back. In today's update, we're going to start off with the greenhouse. I'm going to show you how I got on with that, uh, whether or not the table renovation was a success. Then I'm going to be talking about pests. The pests have arrived, unfortunately. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a general kind of plot update, uh, see how things are getting on. So here we are in the newly renovated greenhouse. The tables I think are looking really good. Um, so I did in the end cut the legs off the bottom. Um, so you can see in the back there, they're sat on the sleepers. And that might be bad because it means they can't really be used elsewhere. Um, they're kind of permanent fixture in the greenhouse now. But I'm really happy with how it's come out. I've got so much more space in here. Um, it probably doesn't show on the camera, but trust me, it feels that way. Uh, I redid the tabletops, um, so they kind of fit perfectly as well. They're quite flush with the sides of the greenhouse, and they kind of meet in the middle. And there's no issues conflicting with the Louvre vents back there. So, yeah, really happy with this, actually. Um, it was a hell of a lot of work, as you saw last episode. Um, I wasn't too happy doing it, but, yeah, I think it was worth it in the end. And how are the paving slabs? Well, they're okay. It's definitely better than it was. Um, the matting is doing its job, making it look a lot nicer. Oh, but look here, you can see the weeds are still gonna be coming through. Um, so in some parts I've kind of fastened this up. I've attached it to the sleepers. There's other bits like this bit where it's not secured yet. So that is a job that I need to do. Um, just go around and make sure it's all secure, but um, let's have a little look. Let's pull some of this off and see how it's doing. So you can see, actually, this is looking really good. There's nothing in here. Thought there'd be a lot more. There's a few little grass, grassy boys, and there's something coming up there, a thistly type thing, but yeah, it seems to be working quite well, actually. So I'm really excited to show this off. Um, this is called a quad grow. And it's a bit of a strange looking contraption. Um, and I wouldn't normally buy something like this, but I had to get some containers for my tomatoes anyway. Uh, and they were looking surprisingly expensive. So this worked out as really good value just for the containers, let alone um, the rest of it. So what is it? We've got a, a reservoir down here, basically, that you fill up with water. And inside the pots, there is something called capillary matting, which you put down through a hole in the middle of the pot. And that sits in the reservoir and the capillary matting pulls the water up to the soil. And it's basically meant to keep the soil a perfect level of moisture, uh, pretty much at all times. And you've only got to refill the reservoir about once every five days, once a week. Um, so it's great because it means you can go away for the weekend or something like that and not have to worry about your plants. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how this goes. It's meant to be really good for tomatoes in particular because they're really prone to diseases, um, which are often spread like fungal diseases that are spread when water, if you top water, the spores that are in the soil will splash back up and hit the bottom leaves of the tomatoes and then spread throughout the plant. And they can be devastating. They can take out your whole crop. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited. Um, it wasn't cheap. Uh, it was about 40 pounds, one of these, but most containers you're looking at seven to eight pounds anyway. So I've got the four containers. You get some plant food that's back there. It's meant to be really good. People swear by these. I've seen them all over YouTube. Uh, people love them, so we'll see how it goes. So everything in the greenhouse is looking pretty healthy and pest-free, but we'll move outside and I'm going to talk a bit about the pests that have arrived, uh, the crops that I've lost, and what I'm doing to prevent them. So I have here a lovely looking row of spinach. Uh, these have come up really nicely, but I did notice that a lot of the leaves were starting to deform, um, and I'll show you some of the pictures up here. Uh, and I discovered through a bit of Googling that these have been hit by something called beet leaf minor. Um, so obviously these aren't beets, these aren't beetroot, um, but same family. And it can affect Swiss chard, um, spinach, and beetroot, that kind of thing. And it's a tiny little fly that looks kind of like a normal house fly. Uh, and they lay these tiny little white eggs on the underside of the leaves. 
and those then hatch out and the larvae burrow into the leaves. As they burrow away at the leaves, it causes the leaves to die. Um, and obviously very harmful for a crop like this where you want to eat the leaves. But I've had a lot of success. Basically, I come up every morning uh, and just check the undersides of the leaves. And if there's any little white eggs, they're easy enough to get rid of. Um, and since I started doing that, the crop's been fine. So. Another pest that's affecting the salad bed. Uh, when I put these lettuces in, they, they've all been struggling a little bit, um, especially the taller, the Andean leaves. They've really done not much at all. We've lost one lettuce completely, um, and I've realized that it's blackfly, uh, or, or some kind of aphid. Now, aphids and blackfly are fairly ubiquitous, but you can see here they're being farmed by ants, um, and they're just resting on the underside of the leaves. And normally I would go along and just uh, dispatch these, get rid of these. But I've left these because I've seen a lot of ladybird larvae, um, which hopefully are going to come along and take care of this problem for me. But these are causing real problems for these plants. You can see this leaf is completely twisted. And underneath here we have a huge number of black fly. And it might be that I do need to take care of these manually because the ants are known to farm the black fly. The black fly will produce a kind of nectar for the ants, a sweet juice that the ants come, a, come along and take away. And in exchange, I believe the ants will fend off predators. So the ants might be a match for the ladybird larvae. For our third pest of today, we've come to the brassica bed, which is looking okay. And over here, our kohlrabi are looking very sad, uh, to be honest. And you see the edges of those leaves? They're looking all kind of frazzled and eaten. Well, that is the flea beetle damage. Now these guys are quite hard to see and they're much harder to get rid of. You can see there's one on the leaf just here. Tiny little black beetles. Um, and you can't really get rid of them manually. See this one? Because if you try and dispatch them, they jump away just like that. They've got a mad jump on them and they just elude you. But yeah, look at these leaves, absolutely ruined. So for these guys, I think I'm gonna need an insecticide of some kind. I think I'm gonna try neem oil, which is a, a natural one, an organic, uh, an organic oil that comes from a seed. Um, you could try washing up liquid, that's meant to be good. Um, quite diluted washing up liquid, we'll quite often see off pests like this. But uh, yeah, the good news is they've only gone for the kohlrabi, which were the young ones. Um, and you can see I've planted out a number of cabbages in the brassica bed now. But the rest of the crops are pretty much left alone. So it could be a lot worse. And last but certainly not least, we have slugs. So I've consistently said I'm so lucky to not be dealing with any slug problems and they have started having a nibble. Um, I haven't lost any plants still to them, but the mini bed that you see here next to me alongside the greenhouse is starting to get some slug damage you can see little hole here really nothing to complain about honestly um, compared to what they'll do to most people's leaf crops uh, this one's probably the worst bit of damage i've had which all things considered could be a lot worse couldn't it um on the underside of the leaves that i've been picking for harvest uh, i have noticed a little bit of slug damage here and there but like I say, it's really nothing to complain about. A lot of neighbours have come along and asked me how the hell I've still got salad crops in the ground. Uh, and when I tell them that I'm not even using slug pellets, they, they really do balk. Uh, I think most of them think I'm lying. But uh, yeah, most of the salads, totally fine. So you will have noticed from the date at the start of the video, this one's a lot sooner uh, than I would normally upload. Um, today is Friday that I'm filming on and hopefully it's going up Sunday. Uh, normally what I'll do is I'll film Friday, Saturday, and then I'll spend Sunday and the rest of the week editing up that footage. Um, I know that might be surprising, the, <laughs> the videos aren't exactly that well produced, but it takes an awful long time. Um, most of the videos take about 10 hours to edit down, which is just crazy for a 7-10 minute video. Uh, the 25 minute one took a really long time. But yeah, today is a bit more of a one take approach, so... Yeah, with that said, I'm going to start rambling around the plot and show you what I've been doing all week because I've been coming up here instead of editing, basically. So, the compost pile. I've been saying for the last three videos, I think, uh, if you include this one, that I need to get this compost pile 
turned over and sorted out uh, and I have not done that <laughs> as you can see um, if we take a look under here you can see now it's mostly green material uh, it's mostly weeds I've been pulling up I have been doing an awful lot of weeding absolutely loads of it so um yeah I still need to get that turned over at some point um, I think it's looking okay but yeah, I'd like to get it sorted through and maybe try and get a bit more secure. Uh, salad bed. I was just talking about this with the pests, but overall I think it's looking really good. Um, the salads, the, the main lettuce, these buttery lettuce, they're all year round. They have kind of stalled in here, they're not doing very well. Uh, and you can see here, I've installed a... installed, well it's just a... a plastic bottle like a two litre bottle that I've cut open and sunk into the ground with some holes in that I've drilled uh, and this is kind of common you see it in a lot of gardens uh, where you kind of you don't want to encourage slugs so my working theory about why I've not got much slug damage is because if you look around there's a lot of dry barren soil right and slugs don't like traveling over that they like nice moist damp dark areas and it's been really dry weather as well so when I'm watering, I try and try and prevent water going everywhere and allowing slugs easy access. And this is a good way of doing that. I can get water to the roots uh, without creating a super, super nice place for slugs to go. And you can see this lettuce is doing really well. That was put in a little bit earlier than the other ones though. Um, and some of the others are a lot smaller. We'd lost a couple, just completely died. I know I'm still watering these, of course, um, but with the clay soil, it really does retain moisture. This looks dry as a bone, but if you stick a, a moisture meter down there, it's plenty moist. So, if anything, these might be getting too much water. That might have been what killed it off. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. Onions, doing quite well as well. These are the, the leftovers from the onion sets I had that I thought, well, I should plant these anyway. Here are the main onion crop. I uh, might have put these a little bit close together. Uh, some of them are quite close uh, when you think of the size of a full full grown onion. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. Uh, still keeping it quite weed free. Have a little weed before shooting obviously. Um, but they look okay. Over here the first carrots that I've sowed have come up in a right old clump which is a bit annoying. Um, but the seed onions doing very well considering I thought they were all going to die. There's a second row of carrots there still there um third and fourth rows haven't come up yet there's just a couple but yeah for the most part not doing much shed looking as sorry as ever really should make a door at some point potatoes uh they look all right don't they they're doing okay they're starting to wilt a little bit uh this one in particular a little bit of wilt on here could they need water? I haven't been watering them very much at all. Uh, we've got five types in here. There's Manhattan, Maris Piper, uh, King Edwards. There's some Cara as well. And I think one other that I've forgotten. Um, I've got them written down which, which ones are which. I'm sure that these, the ones that are doing the worst, are the first earlies <laughs> that I've landed. Um, which have taken the longest to come up, which is ridiculous. So... Yeah, we'll see what happens with these. Well, they all look pretty okay, pretty strong. Ah, very exciting, this bed. So I finally unveiled this the other day, took, took off all that cover, uh, and it stayed really nice and weed-free. So I've got some of the lettuces in here, because like, I, I was swimming in lettuce, had to get it out somewhere. Got our first courgette. Um, once again, I'm making sure the root's getting some water without uh, lots of water on the top. Um, Maybe a little bit early for courgette, uh, taking a slight risk, but I mean, honestly, the frosts down here, I think 15th of April on average is our last frost. Um, there's been polar winds up and down the country past few weeks, uh, loads of people posting all over the place about losing all their crops. So, I mean, we're very lucky down here to not have to deal with any of that. Got kind of makeshift, makeshift cage up here. I, I, I've never grown cucumbers, I don't know. I don't know if they need this or something better, um, but this has been in a little while now and it's showing some new growth. That's a good sign. A little bit of slug damage on here, but 
I think that happened when it was in the greenhouse. We've got a second cucumber over there. Brassica bird, looking really good. Um, like I say, apart from the flea beetles having a go, um, it's still a bit chaos in here. I don't know what most of these plants are, apart from the kohlrabi. Time will tell, when it? Uh, obviously the spinach as well, and the lettuces. They're, they're looking really good, actually. Um, these spinaches, these spinaches? This spinach is where I first noticed the beet leaf miner. The slugs are having a go at this one a little bit as well. Um, but like I say, beet leaf miner has been taken care of. You just gotta search for the eggs. Now we'll go over to the mini bed. Uh, it's looking pretty, pretty weedy, actually, isn't it? All these weeds I should take care of along here, but yeah, we've got some spinach, some more Andean salad leaves. These are really weird, actually. They're kind of, they have such a leggy growth structure. They are starting to bush out. You can see all this growth. Um, but I think actually it's the pests attacking it, which has made it start to bush out. So I think if I'd been topping these, you know, clipping the top off, when they were in the greenhouse, they might have had a much more bushy growth. But I haven't really wanted to take any of this for salad leaves because, well, it still looks so young, doesn't it? Certainly compared to this, which is my prize lettuce at the moment, that all year round, you can see some real slug damage starting to happen in here. Um, but I think that one's ready for harvesting. I've had two already, uh, and it is a beautiful lettuce. When I first, first tasted it, I was a bit underwhelmed, but um, as they mature, they actually get much nicer and much less bitter. Some really good looking spinach in here, doing okay. And then we've got a couple more lettuce over here. Like I say, these were way too densely planted. That's why I've been taking them out. But uh, yeah, lovely. And over here, we've got a, a little pot of leek. Um, so I don't really know what I'm doing with leek, but they take so long to grow. Um, I've taken them out of the module trays because I think they were, they were done in there. And I've put them in here. Um, and I'm going to leave these to for a few months um, until there's space in a bed somewhere. Probably from things that I've harvested, maybe the salads or something like that. Um, and then once they're kind of pencil thickness, they can probably go out into their final position. Ta-da! <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this took blooming ages, this stupid bed it's so small and it looks so rubbish the reason it took so long is because this netting which i found in the shed is full of holes like absolutely gaping holes and it probably doesn't come out on camera but i've had to go around filling in loads of holes with these little um basically bits of wire that i've just strung around or bits of wood bits of twig it doesn't have to be perfect because this is for birds this is to keep birds off my precious strawberries um, and so far it's holding up okay. It was just a nightmare to set up. I've kind of got, so I've got nails in here that it's kind of hooked on. And then on this side, I've got it weighed down with a brick and a bit of wood and the same here. And I kind of, I can just about get in there if I take these two off. It's, um, over here I've actually screwed a kind of batten into the side so it is secured. And we've got our second nearly ripe strawberry down there. Still slug damage free. Can't believe I'm saying that out loud. Um, got another one down here. That one's nearly ready as well. So yeah, really happy with the strawberries. They've done really well. And in here, I planted a load of kohlrabi because they were just too, way too big for the uh, pots that they were in. And it was netted, so I thought, hey, they'll stay for your butterflies. And I haven't seen any flea beetles on here yet. I'm just looking now. Yeah, I can't see them on here either, so I'm sure they'll arrive soon, but if this crop of kohlrabi fails in the brassica bed, not the end of the world. So yeah, aside from the greenhouse, that's what we've got growing in the ground at the moment, and I, I think I'm really happy with it. Rest of the plot, oh, it's a state. We've got all this still waiting for a skip to turn up. Uh, that, <laughs> that fire pit is full of weeds uh, drying out. I've done the same thing over here. I'm kind of drying out some of this grass, um, letting it fully dry out and die so that if I compost it, it's not gonna all just regrow into weeds. Uh, this wood I'm sorting through. Uh, this is just stuff that's got nails in that I need to take out. It's a nice little little job that I can do here and there. And the orchard area. Well, 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 it is completely overgrown. <laughs> As you can see, the grass is like up to my waist. 
Um, and I'm just choosing not to worry about it this year. One of those things, you take on a new plot, you've got to cut yourself some slack. You've got to have some wild areas. Um, it is what it is. I think my long-term ambition for this would be to create some kind of wildflower meadow. You can see here at the moment, the grass is pretty much one species. I think it's a rye grass. Uh, it's indicative of a very high nitrogen level in the soil, a very high nutrient level. And the plan is to take some cuts here. Uh, it's a very long-term thing, creating a meadow. You can't create a meadow in a day. It takes years. So your native wildflowers and that kind of thing, they won't thrive in this soil. Uh, you could plant them and they would just get outcompeted by these vigorous grasses that are adapted for these high nitrogen environments. So the idea is you take a cutting of this stuff and you take all that material off, you take all those nutrients away and you compost those down and you can spread those on the rest of your garden. That's great for your vegetables, but not so great for your wildflowers. And it takes a, it takes a long time. It takes quite a few cuts to begin to bring that uh, nutrient load down and then you can think about sowing some some other plants uh, the first one I would be looking at would be yellow rattle uh, which is it's called the meadow maker and it's a hemi parasite so it, it would uh, it uses it it does its own photosynthesis um, but it does also tap into the structures of other plants and sap them of their energy so it will take away from these vigorous grasses uh, leaving more of a niche for other grasses and wildflowers to come in. Uh, and hopefully we could create a really nice little biodiverse meadow. meadow. It'll be brilliant for beetles and pollinators for the, uh, for the trees. Um, and well, it's space for nature, isn't it? Which is in very short supply. Um, it's kind of what I'm all about. So yeah, unfortunately I've been told we're not allowed ponds, uh, so might not be able to have a pond uh, or I might be able to do something on the sly we'll see but yeah that's going to be the kind of biodiversity area that's what the plan is anyway I mean that's a very long-term thing and I might ha not have the plot for that long so I'm not going to get too stressed out about it and I'm going to mow it at the end of the month so yes moving on from the biodiversity area I won't bore you any longer I spend half my life boring people about insects and wildlife uh, that's kind of my um that's my background, really. It's what I do as a career, uh, kind of working conservation. So uh, definitely a big passion of mine. But uh, yeah, I think that's everything outside. Let's have a quick look in the greenhouse. I say quick, it's never quick, is it? So I've showed off the tomatoes in the quad grow already, but we do have the three varieties that I'm growing this year represented. We've got black cherry, Tirola. This is the one that I took home and saved by putting it on the windowsill. And over here we have the golden sun. You can see how much bushier, how much bigger this is uh, compared to this little leggy boy. Overwinter chili, doing great, bursting back into life. Uh, starting to get a few flower buds on here, so I'm fertilizing that one. Up here we've got our salads. Um, these are kind of stalled at the moment. Um, I'll put them out as I harvest. Uh, they're looking fine, looking all good. Tomatoes, uh, we've got so this is another Tirola. I thought they had all died, but I actually found one, um, which is really great news because this was very expensive, bit of a specialist one, meant to be lovely. Quite excited about that. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six, just six. That's not too bad. Six other tomato plants. Oh, and this tiny little baby one doesn't really count. So seven tomato plants. I've got a couple of grow bags I'm going to use, and I think I'm going to put them outside um, in a little while. But um, yeah, first year growing tomatoes, really don't know what I'm doing. Playing it by ear, we'll see. I think this is my best chili plant. <laughs> it's pretty pitiful, uh, to be honest, especially compared to the tomatoes, but kind of looking okay. I will still get a, a semi-decent crop of chilies off this. Um, I'm gonna put it in the quad grow and I will probably film me doing that at some point. Uh, I've divided the spearmint um, that took ages to germinate, you'll remember, but that's looking really good now. Got some more marigolds. Oh, I should have said I've planted some of those out. I don't know if they were on the video or if you spotted them. Uh, the basil, oh, doing amazing. Smells great. Oh, God, that is so good. Um, still got all those old brassicas, just in case. Uh, this, oh, the strawberries. Alpine strawberries bursting into life. You love to see that. Um, oh, we've got some wild rocket over here. I was going to let this establish and then plant it out, 
But I've learned that the flea beetle also loves rocket. Um, so I'm a bit nervous. I might, I might end up just growing those in pots in the greenhouse or something like that. Yeah, we'll see. More marigolds and some basil and that kind of stuff over here. Garlic chives. <laughs> I mean, oh, oh, rubbish. Uh, I might repot them soon. They are, they are still alive. They're not dying off yet, but very, very slow. Oh, I have planted out some nasturtiums here and there as well. Another courgette, a big boy over here. Uh, I'm just going to put this out. I'm just keeping this back in a little while, just in case this, the frost eats or the slugs suddenly turn up and decimate the other one. And I've got another cucumber over here and a couple of butternut squash as well. So, yeah, I think really it's time for me to start sowing some more stuff. I need to get some successional stuff going. Oh, I've got some leftover kohlrabi under here and some more leeks as well. Uh, but yeah, I need to get some successional stuff going. Um, some more salads mainly, I think. Just because I know it looks like I've got a huge amount at the moment, but it'll take a good month or so for them to get this size and then another month while they're out in the ground before they're edible. So yeah, I think that's about me done for today. Um, let me know what you think. Do you prefer these kind of slightly more one takey shots where uh, I'm showing off what I've done? Or do you prefer seeing it in action? You know, the time lapses that kind of stuff. Personally, I prefer making the time lapses. I think they're, they're slightly more interesting and engaging and satisfying and relaxing to watch. Um, I quite like them. A lot more effort, but I think it's probably worth it. Um, it does mean that everything's about a week old when you do see it, a week or two. Um, and it probably means oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to keep up with one upload a week. Um, it's a huge amount of work. Um, so I might go to fortnightly or something like that. Um, but these one take, they're a lot easier to film and edit. So let me know what you prefer. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how it's all coming along. I think it's wonderful how much is in the ground now. Um, it's just, it's the most amazing thing seeing it come along. Um, it, it, it really is special. I know it's my first year doing it, but um, it's just, it, it really is wonderful. It really is so cool to see. Stuff that you've grown from tiny little seeds bursting into life and then you finally get to see it on your plate at the end of it and it's just, it's one of the most satisfying processes, you know. Like I say, let me know what you think about this style of video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And hopefully, I'll see you again next time. Oh, and remember to like and subscribe. Love you, bye. Here's something that I completely forgot about, uh, that I forgot to mention. I made some nettle tea. <laughs> Oh my god, it stinks! It's horrible!